religious power and control. Thought this was going to get easier, didn't you? <laughs> Listen, I watched last night all three episodes of the documentary on Hillsong. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Now, I will tell you this. In my opinion, it has a clear um, goal and narrative. I don't believe it's 100% unbiased. There are some things there in those three one-hour things that I would say, ah, they misrepresented or they misconstrued that. But the basis, the facts of what happened, you say, why are you talking about this? I can't believe he's going to talk about this. I'll tell you why I'm talking about this. Because we have no problem talking about people on the outside of the church that are trying to make us look bad. Can I go there just for a moment? Y'all, the church is warring against Disney because of their embracing the don't say gay bill. But we have pedophiles running rampant in the church and nobody's talking about it. Don't tell me you want to protect children. We want to protect our children, but we have a history, not just in the Catholic Church, in the evangelical church. I can give you example after example of where we have a history of covering up sexual abuse of minors, not people in my family, okay? <laughs> children, children, people under the age of 18, we cover it up. We shame victims in the church. Do you hear me today? And then we want to rail against Disney because we don't think they're protecting our children. It is taking the name of the Lord in vain. It is not being real about representing him to this world. It's about politics and power and money, not actually about protecting children. And if we're going to do one, we sure as heck better do the other. Listen to me. I'm going to just say it because somebody, you know, nobody will get up in a pulpit in a church and actually name some names, and I'm going to do it because we will, we, will, we will call out Nancy Pelosi from the pulpit. Come on, you've heard it. There's a pastor in town, in, in this town right now, who almost every week is shaming and calling out Democrats and the Democrat Party by name, who, who goes to school board meetings and by name tells school board members, we're going to vote you out. So if they can do that by name, I'm going to by name tell you that in this documentary I saw, and you can look it up online, that Brian Houston, who has now since resigned from global leadership of the most powerful church in the world, covered up or tried to cover up his dad's rampant sexual abuse of minors in the 70s and 80s. He delivered the $10,000 check to one of the victims to pay him off for his father. And he leads, or did lead, the most influential church in the world, Hillsong. And it was covered up for decades. After the, the commission, the Royal Commission in New South Wales found that he knew and that there was a problem with it and that he helped cover it up and that his dad continued to preach after he had sexually abused minor children, a young boy, like 11 years old, repeatedly. He continued to preach after the, this commission said that he was a part of covering it up. And they turned their evidence, this royal commission, turned their evidence over to the police department there in New South Wales. It took them 13 years to file charges. Heard somebody say, you know that we're all about loving the lost, but we're not even taking care of the found. I told you I had some juice today. <laughs> Tried to warn you. What am I saying? I'm, I'm saying well, there, there's a pastor that we, we've known his family for years in Virginia who just got charged with very similar things. Sexual abuse of a minor. What happens in the church 
I'll give you another example. John MacArthur. This stuff, look it up. You can see the YouTube videos of them talking. John MacArthur had, I think, it was, don't quote me on the time period, but in the 90s, had a woman come to him and said, I think my husband, I caught my husband sexually abusing our children. John MacArthur dealt with it. Very powerful man in the Christian world. Dealt with it, right? And then went on record, you can find the clips on YouTube twice to call out this woman by name and shame her for blowing the whistle on her husband for abusing her own children. A decade later, he gets arrested for the very same crime that he publicly shamed a woman for trying to protect her children over. When church becomes too powerful and has too much money and too much to lose, it's a bad thing. You say, how did they get away with that in Hillsong? Well, the governing police chief over that entire region frequented the church. The premier, which is like a governor of our state, of that kind of state there, um, frequently spoke at their conferences. How do you think it took 13 years for them? And it was only from such mounting pressure from the local parliament, the government itself, did they finally file charges. I'm not going to wallow in this any longer. I have lots of other examples and lots of other names up there. All I want to tell you is this. I will tell you one more thing. Franklin, or Billy, Graham's, Billy Graham's grandson, say that 10 times fast, is a district attorney here in the state of Florida. Okay? He's a district attorney. He's a DA. He has prosecuted a lot of these cases in the evangelical church. He says, now this is not some guy who hates the church and he's out to get us, you know, the media out to get us. None of that. This is Billy Graham's grandson. He says, and I quote, he says, that the number of rising cases of reported sexual abuse in evangelical churches rivals that of the Catholic Church in the early 2000s. Why don't you know this? 